Attention, all troops. He's alive. Alive. Welcome to the Raptors. Growing up. I always had a dream about going to summer camp, and I touched on this in the Friday the 13th episode that I did a couple of years ago. My summer camp dreams were divided between two movies that I had seen, one being Friday the 13th and the other being Meatballs. Friday the 13th obviously involved me getting killed as a fantasy, but in the Meatballs fantasy, I did not get killed. In fact, I met a good friend, and that would be Bill Murray, an older brother type who took me under his wing, taught me to run, played poker with me for peanuts, and was just a nice guy. I'm not sure if that appeals to other young kids. I imagine it does. But my dream got a dose of reality when I was young, when the concept of stranger danger started to rear its head in my neck of the woods. And in stranger danger, all adults who you did not know were people you were not supposed to talk to. That means that anyone who was going to be nice to me was greeted with a sort of pessimism right off the bat, while before the concept was brought up to me, before it was drilled into my head by schools, by my mother, I was kind of a friendly kid, willing to talk to neighbors and friends, but afterwards they scared the heck out of me, thinking that anyone, especially a guy, who would talk to me was someone who was going to hurt me a great deal. And my meatballs-style fantasy of making an adult friend who could teach me things went out the window. And basically the only adults in my life that I dealt with and felt comfortable with from that point on were people who were in my family or pre-approved figures that my mother knew or who I knew before the concept of stranger danger was thrown at me. Now I know the people who were presenting this to me had my best interests in mind, but as an adult, even as a kid, I resented it because I felt like I was being pumped full of fear constantly. And I was. When I watch Meatballs now, I can see it now, as I saw it as a kid, as this wonderful fantasy about a kid who, transplanted into an unfamiliar situation, makes friends with a mentor and pal who teaches him stuff and helps him find self-worth. But also, as an adult, I can see the tremendous influence that society has put on kids to fear adults. I don't know what the solution is for this sort of thing, All I know is that it is regrettable because I remember watching Meatballs pre all this stuff and thinking, wow, this is great. I wish I'd go to summer camp and this will happen to me. And then thinking afterwards, well, isn't that unusual that an adult would spend so much time paying attention to a kid? It is weird how society changes so quickly. And even sometimes the best intentions can bring about negative consequences. That's a shame, because I love meatballs. And as a kid, I loved the whole idea of it. So on today's show, we're going to talk about meatballs. We'll talk about the stars of the film, the people behind it. We'll talk about the plot, the music, the sequels, and where you can find meatballs today. We have an info-packed episode ahead of us. So without further ado, let's start the show. Meatballs was a 1979 comedy made in Canada. It was directed by Ivan Reitman, and it is famous for being hilarious, and also as the first starring film appearance of Bill Murray. It also launched the career of somebody who did not perhaps have the stellar film career of Bill Murray, but who has done some wonderful work, Chris Makepeace. We'll talk a little bit about the actors later. The movie was directed by Ivan Reitman, 
Reitman, probably best known for his comedy work, did Meatballs, Stripes, Ghostbusters, also did Twins. The film has four people credited with writing it. It has Len Blum, who is a Canadian screenwriter, film producer, and composer. Is credited with writing such classics as Meatballs, Stripes, Heavy Metal, Meatballs 3, and Howard Stern's Private Parts. Dan Goldberg, another writer, would go on to become a producer, still working today, has produced Old School and The Hangover films. Janice Allen has a writing credit on Meatballs and did some production work on the film Double Negative, but haven't heard much about her since then. And rounding out the writing staff is the very famous Harold Rimus. American actor, director, comedy guy, probably best known as Egon Spengler in Ghostbusters and as Russell Ziski in Stripes, has written and directed movies like Caddyshack, Analyze This, and Groundhog Day, and was the head writer on the TV series SCTV. He also performed there. Great television show. The film was originally titled Summer Camp, not Meatballs, which was actually a much more succinct title. And if you ever get your hands on the original script, it's real fun to read because there are extra scenes that were not filmed that are not necessary for the plot, but it's fun to picture the characters that you would see in the movie doing those scenes. It's almost like the deleted scenes of the mind. That is a great idea for a segment. Deleted scenes of the mind. Welcome to Deleted Scenes of the Mind. One of the scenes deleted from Meatballs involved the camp counselors going into town for a little fun and games but of course while there guess who they run into those evil jocks from camp mohawk this has been another installment of deleted scenes of the mind the film was shot in camp white pine which is in halliburton canada it is a working summer camp and was actually in use during the making of this film. So some of the extras that you see in the movie, especially around Parents' Day, are actually camp members who were just pulled in to be used. There are actually two Camp North Stars in the United States, one in Wisconsin and the other in Maine, but they are not associated with or are the basis for the Camp North Star in Meatballs. So the big star of Meatballs is Bill Murray. Bill Murray has a reputation for being flighty. Is that a good word? And according to the commentary, if you watch the DVD special edition, they weren't sure if Bill Murray was going to show up to film Meatballs until the day of filming. And the first shots of the film are actually the first scenes that you see in the movie. So the outfit you see with Bill Murray with his Hawaiian shirt and red shorts, those were his clothes that he showed up with to film. Principal shooting was done in 30 days, but several of the shots in the film were added after the initial filming had ended, and those are the ones that sort of enhance the relationship between Bill Murray's character and Chris Makepeace's character, Rudy and Tripper. They are the ones at the bus station and when they're playing poker for peanuts. In the intervening time between the original filming and these extras, Chris Makepeace had gone through puberty. So he actually had started to develop a mustache during the off time. Bill Murray saw that and thought, well, that doesn't match up and took Chris Makepeace to the sink and shaved off his mustache. So Chris Makepeace's first shave was done by the very famous Bill Murray who in addition to being a great actor, would probably make a great barber. Today's show is brought to you by a local boating store. If you're going to spend time at a summer camp, on a lake, you better have a boat. Get with it, get a boat. Get with it, get a float. Get a boat and go, go, go. Have more fun on the H2O. Get with it, get a boat. Love those boats. So a little bit about the plot of Meatballs. If you have not seen Meatballs, there could be some spoilers in here. I apologize in advance. The film is about a low-budget summer camp called Camp North Star that has a head counselor named Tripper Harrison, played by Bill Murray. And he is surrounded by a bunch of goofy CITs, counselors in training. There is lots of different subplots that involve the campers trying to get with one another. And Bill Murray falling in love with Roxanne, who is the female head counselor. 
but the main plot involves Tripper taking one of the campers, Rudy, under his wing. The kid doesn't fit in, doesn't feel comfortable. Tripper sees that, tries to make him his friend, and they start running together every morning. When the Camp Olympiad starts, you don't think the Camp North Star is going to be doing well because the rival camp, Camp Mohawk, is just so superior. Rich kids with all the benefits, but of course Camp North Star plays a little dirty, plays by their own rules, and they do really well, and it comes down to the running competition, the marathon, and Rudy has to step in and try to win the day. Will he do it? Who knows? He does. After these messages, we will return. McDonald's introduces a whole new kind of happiness. All new Happy Meals <laughs> with new fun, <laughs> new jokes, new games, new puzzles, new surprises. <laughs> Participating McDonald's now. <laughs> Nothing can make you laugh like the Happy Meal joke books from McDonald's, filled with the funniest jokes from the Riddle Me contest. You get one book inside every new Happy Meal box. Happy Meal joke books, four times as funny when you collect them all. KMBC TV, Channel 9, Kansas City, Missouri. Hi. Now's the time to plan a great summer of fun for your child at Young People's Day Camp. Let me show you how Young People's Day Camp makes fun happen. At Young People's Day Camp, your child is picked up and brought home by Camp Bus. In between, the days are filled with fun activities. There's boat rides, old summer sports, long swims in the pool, arts and crafts, weekly field trips, and so much more. All under the care, supervision, and instruction of state licensed teachers and administrators. There are two to eight week programs available. And for the 16th anniversary year, tuition is just $110 a week for an eight week program. Camp shirts, tote bags, trophies, awards, and banners are all provided free. Act now to reserve a place for your child. For the camp nearest you, call in the five boroughs, 718-447-8010, New Jersey 521-3600, Long Island 731-1000, Westchester Rockland 664-8200, and for our new teen tours, 718-338-TEEN. And now, back to the show. So a little bit about the cast. Bill Murray plays Tripper Harrison. Great Bill Murray character name. William James Bill Murray, American actor. Done a ton of comedy. Saturday Night Live, Caddyshack, Ghostbusters. Oscar nominated. Amazing. Chris Makepeace played Rudy Gurner. Probably best known for his role in this film and in the movie My Bodyguard, which is a great movie. If you have not seen Meatballs or My Bodyguard, you should go and rent both of them. They're great. Kate Lynch played Roxanne, Canadian actress, plays Bill Murray's love interest. I understand she was cast in the film because they thought she would be a realistic love interest for Bill Murray and a realistic female camp counselor. Very good actress. Does a great job in the film. Harvey Atkin played Morty Melnick, the head of the camp. Another Canadian actor who has done a lot of voiceover work and appeared in 75 films. Did the voice of Sam in The Adventures of Sam and Mac, Freelance Police, and played the voice of Bowser Koopa in Deke Entertainment's Super Mario Brothers. Russ Bannum played Bobby Crockett, would go on to become a freelance journalist, writer. Jack Blum played Spaz. Spaz is the stereotypical nerd, but Jack Blum does a great job. Appeared in dozens of other feature film and television shows. Continues to work as a writer and producer in Canada and America. Keith Knight played Larry Fink Finkelstein, passed away in 2007 from brain cancer. He was the stereotypical fat guy and buddy of Spaz. He would also do the voice of the White Rabbit in the Care Bears Adventures in Wonderland and was the voice of Lowly Worm in the Busy World of Richard Scarry. Sarah Torgov played Candace. In addition to Meatballs, she appeared in TV shows like Simon and & Simon and The Greatest American Hero. She retired from acting in 88 and is an artist and book illustrator in L.A. Matt Craven was Hardware Renzetti. He has a recurring role on NCIS as the Secretary of the Navy. Margot Pindivik played Jackie. A lot of voice acting, TV work, including a role on 21 Jump Street, and in the early 90s version of G.I. Joe and Bucky O'Hare in the Toad Wars. Todd Hoffman played Wheels. 
had a small role in Weird Science, but is probably best known as the brother of Dustin Hoffman. Christian DeBell played AL, was a fashion model, did some adult films as well. And finally, Cindy Gerling played Wendy, placed third in Miss Canada, has worked in TV as recently as 2003. When Meatballs came out, it started small in only a couple of theaters, but did really well. And its opening weekend, it brought in $77,170, which for seven screens gave it an $11,000 per screen average, which was really good. It opened on June 29th, 1979, and would go on to gross $43 million at the box office. The weekend it opened, it came in third place. Ahead of it was Moonraker, which had just come out which made $7 million, but was on 788 screens. And number two was Alien, which had been out for a couple of weeks, which made $4.5 million that weekend. In addition to making a good amount of money, Meatballs also received three Genie Awards, and the Genie Awards are given out to recognize the best of Canadian cinema by the Academy of Canadian Cinema and Television. Kate Lynch won a Best Performance in an Actress in a Leading Role, Genie, and the film also won Best Screenplay and the Golden Reel Award. That is Making It by David Naughton, who is an American actor and singer, best known for his role in American Werewolf in London and Midnight Madness, but he also had a TV show called Making It, which was set in Passaic, New Jersey, and was sort of a Saturday Night Fever, disco craze, I don't want to say rip-off, but sort of. It didn't last very long, but David recorded Making It, and that song, which would appear in Meatballs, would actually make it to the top 40 charts. The instrumental music for Meatballs was written by Elmer Bernstein, who would go on to do lots of stuff, including Ghostbusters. And other people who contributed to the soundtrack are Mary McGregor, who performed Good Friday, and Rick Dees and his cast of idiots doing the title theme, Meatballs. Unfortunately, if you're a fan of the Meatballs soundtrack, you'll have to get it on vinyl. It was never made into a CD, although if you look online, you might be able to find somebody who has transferred the vinyl version into mp3 format. Meatballs had three sequels. Now I'm not going to get into the details of the sequels too much because I don't think they live up to the original film all that well and only one of them has anything to actually do with the original film. That being said, some people really like these sequels and they have a special place in their hearts. Meatballs 2 was made in 1984 and has none of the same actors, none of the same stories. Stars Richard Mulligan, Hamilton Camp, Kim Richards. It does have Paul Rubens in it and John Larroquette. I went and saw it in the theaters and was hoping it would be a sequel to Meatballs, and it wasn't. It is a sequel in name alone. Meatballs 3, Summer Job, is the third installment in the Meatballs quadrology, and it is the only one of the sequels that has anything to do with the original Meatballs. We see Rudy all grown up, and he has to get a job. It really has not much to do with Summer Camp, Finally, you have the Corey Feldman Meatballs, Meatballs 4, also known as Meatballs 4 to the Rescue, the final in the franchise. Some people really like this version because I guess it's their version of Meatballs. All of these sequels are light, fun romps, but I don't think they have the heart of the original. Still worth checking out sometimes, and all of them you can find on home video. Meatballs itself was on home video and Selectivision starting in the 80s. Meatballs was first released on DVD in 1999 and would be followed up with a special edition that included a director's cut and making of video in 2007. In June of 2012, a Blu-ray copy of the film was released and it has the making of commentary but lacks the making of featurette that was on the DVD, which is a shame. The making of featurette was a lot of fun to watch, but the quality of the transfer in the Blu-ray is very good. Would they make a film like Meatballs nowadays? I'm not so sure it would make it past the concepting phase unless it was done maybe as an independent, but then it's sort of zany enough to not be an independent. Meatballs sort of straddles this line between feel-good comedy and screwball comedy, which the best screwball comedies sort of try to do, but I think Meatballs almost falls on the side of feel-good comedy 
and it is through the talents of the writers, the directors, and of course, these amazing actors that this is accomplished. When summer rolls around, I like to take meatballs out, put it on the TV and watch it, and relive my summer fantasies of going to summer camp. Then I step outside, realize I hate the heat, I dislike insects, I run back inside, put on another DVD, and then realize, hey, now I'm really living out my true summer fantasies. Thanks for listening to the show. For more retro fun, you can drop by the website at retroist.com. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I'm at facebook.com slash retroist and twitter.com slash retroist. The music you hear on the show is by Peachy. If you have musical needs, you can email Peachy at peachy at retroist.com. Thanks for listening to the show, and I hope you have a great weekend. So this grown-up Rudy is played by Patrick Dempsey, who is on a show called Grey's Anatomy, which I've never seen, but I think he's Mick Dreamy? I want to say Dreamy? Steamy? Creamy? I don't know. This has been a retrospective production. Goodbye.